Amen, like you mean it. Thank God that you're here. Give God an applause. Thank God that you're here. Amen. He is worthy to be praised on today, isn't he? He is worthy to be praised. Our order of service goes as opening song, praise and worship team. Worship leader, Elder Gary Shelby, prayer, Elder Gary Shelby, Old Testament, Brother um, Timothy Wilson. New Testament will come from Deacon Vincent Tunley. Our welcome will come from First Lady Evangelist Moore. Then at that, after that, we'll be in the hands of our praise and worship team. Amen? Amen. God is good, isn't he? Amen. I said God is good, isn't he? I, I've never seen where God ain't been good to us. Amen? God is good. Now at this time, would you please gather around or stand where, you may, stand where you're at so that we can have our, our prayer? And just think about how good God has been to you. Think about the goodness and the grace and the mercy God has shown us. Amen. Most gracious Father, we thank you right now, Father God. Father, we thank you for last night's laying down and for this morning rising, Father. We thank you, Father God, that you touched us, Father God. Oh, you touched our heart, Father God. Father God, you touched our legs, Father God. You touched our ankles, Father God. Oh, Father, we just want to say thank you, Father God. Father God, thank you for your Holy Spirit, Father God. Oh, we thank you right now, Father God. Oh, Father, look down upon your people, Father God. Oh, Father God, let your Holy Spirit indwell in us, Father God. Oh, touch us all, Father God. Father, we need you right now, Father. Father, we cannot do this without you. Oh, Father, whatever's going on around us, Father God, it's not supposed to affect us, Father God. We are believers, Father God. We are true believers, Father God. We believe in the anointing. We believe in the Holy Ghost. We believe in the death, burial, and the resurrection. We are believers, Father God. We are true believers, Father God. And we want to say thank you right now, Father God. All over, Father God. Touch every church, Father God. Touch everyone, Father God. Touch every bishop. Touch every pastor, Father God. 
Oh, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father God, let your Holy Spirit touch this world, Father God. Let your Holy Spirit, Father God, touch this nation, Father God. Let your Holy Spirit touch every country, Father God. Oh, Father God, you don't, you have no respect to person, Father God. So, Father God, touch today. Touch today, Father God. Touch today, Father God. Oh, Father God, continue, Father God, to pour out your spirit, Father God. Oh, pour it out, Father God. Oh, Father God, increase our faith, Father God. Increase it, Father God. Increase our faith all over this world, Father God. We need you right now, Father God. Oh, Father, I'm asking you right now for a special blessing, Father God, for every pastor, every bishop, every leader all over this world, Father God. Go to Africa, Father God. Go to Jerusalem. Go everywhere, Father God. Let your anointing, Father God, let your anointing just flow. Let them know, let us know that you still in control. You in control, Father. You got control, Father. And we want to say thank you, Father God. In your son Jesus' name, we do pray. Amen. morning. We're reading Psalms 112, 1 through 3, verses 1 through 3. Praise ye the Lord, bless is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighteth greatly in his commandments. His seed shall be mighty upon earth, the generation of the upright shall be blessed. Wealth and riches shall be in his house, and his righteousness endureth forever. Amen. Psalms 1 through 3. I will be reading Philippians 3, verses 12 through 14. Not that I have already attained or am already a perfect, perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold, lay hold for which Christ has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgotten those, forgetting those which are behind me and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press, forward, I press toward a goal for the prize of the upward call of, the God, of G God in Jesus Christ. I read Philippians chapter 3, verses 12 through 14. May God have a blessing to the readers, the hearers, and the doers of his holy word. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, Praise the Lord everybody. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I come to welcome you. Welcome you into this place to sing, to shout, to do what the Spirit of the Lord leads you to do. Amen. Whatever you need is right here. Even if you are watching, whatever you need, you can get from the Lord. I welcome you to the Providence House of Worship, the church that leads you to, into your divine destiny. I promise you that if we can't do you any good, we won't do you any harm. But if you just enter in and allow the, work, the Lord to do the work, I promise you can get just what you need. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. How many know that um, it's good to say hallelujah? It's good to give God the highest praise. It's good to magnify him. It's good to lift him up. Hallelujah. We come to give him the high praise. We come to lift him up and magnify him. So if you can stand with me, even the young people. Come on, stand with me on today. We're going to give God some high praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.
got the highest praise and I live my way and all the people sing hallelujah 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 glory to his name we come to magnify you Jesus the lord is high above the heavens the lord is high above the heavens
need you. I'll lift you up on today, God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name, God. Hallelujah. He's so sweet. He's a good God, a glorious God. Thank you, Jesus. This song says, like the dew in the morning. May he rest upon your heart. May he rest upon my heart. Yes, we 
Come on and lift those hands. All over the building, lift those hands. Those that are watching online, lift those hands. Come on and bless the name of Jesus. If you got a yes in your spirit, 
Come on and shout yes. Yes to the will of the Lord. Yes to his way. My soul says yes. Come on. Do you got a yes in your spirit? Oh, bless his name. Come on, lift him up. Come on and worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Oh, God, we thank you. Lord, we praise you. Lord, we worship you. Come on. The anointing is here. For it is the anointing that breaks the oath. It is the anointing that looses shackles. It is the anointing that destroys every yoke of bondage. Come on and praise him. Open up your mouth. Come on and lift him up. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Oh, yes, Lord. My soul says yes. My mind says yes. My spirit says yes. Whatever you want God to do, say, Lord, do it. Lord, do it for me right now. Come on. I need a move, Lord. I'm waiting, Lord, for you to bless my soul. I'm waiting, Lord, for you to help me. I need your help. I need your strength. I need your power. I need your glory. Yes, Lord. Shout yes, Lord. Come on, shout yes in this place. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on. Come on. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The Lord is turning it around. He's turning it around. I said, God. He's turning it around. No matter what you're going through. No matter what you've been through. God will turn it around. Shout yeah. Shout yeah. Hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, 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 oh. Hallelujah. To the King of Kings. Hallelujah. To the Lord of Lords. Some of you. I said some of you. You need God to do something for you. If you need God to do something for you, just wave your hand. I don't know about you, but I need God to do something for me. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you today for your glory. We thank you for your power. We thank you for your anointing, your strength, your mercy. Lord, we appreciate all that you have done for us and to us and through us. Forgive us, Lord, for all of our transgressions and wash us. Cleanse us and purify us. Wash us again in your blood, God. Lord, we thank you because we know that you are turning things around even in our life. We pray, God, for these, your people that have gathered in this house and those that may be watching via live stream. We pray, God, that you would do a new thing in their life. Spirit of the living God, we pray that you would fall fresh on us. 
Lord, we pray that your anointing will prevail in this place. Let your word prevail even right now. Lord, even as the praise and worship team sang high praise, we pray, God, that high preaching will begin to bless us. We pray, God, that you would teach us on today. Fill us again with your spirit. Fill us again with your Holy Ghost. Fill us again, God. In the name of Jesus, we need a refreshing. We need a refreshing straight from heaven above. Lord, we thank you right now. We pray that we decrease so that you can increase on today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Be seated in the presence of the Lord. We thank God for that wonderful, awesome praise and worship team um, that ministered to us. Uh, today we, of course, give honor. We pay deference to all of the saints um, of the Most High God. We thank God for everyone that thought it not robbery to be here in the house of the Lord. Uh, we thank God for all the elders, Elder Shelby um, and his wife, Elder Moore, and Mother Pat Moore, who I didn't think would be here today. But we certainly thank God for them um, pressing their way. Uh, we thank God for all of these mothers who are not afraid of the corona, uh, but they are here with us. Mother Dorothy Moore and uh, Mother Phyllis, who is here. And all of our missionaries today, uh, Missionary Siwa, amen, who is here, and Missionary Riley. Uh, we thank God for... Our usher, uh, Sister Wilma, amen, who is faithful to the work of the Lord, and to um, all of the deacons, Deacon Tunley, um, Deacon Wilson, who is here, and their wives, and all of the saints, the musicians. Uh, we first thank God for our first lady, um, who is doing a wonderful job ministering to us. And I forgot about Missionary Thomas. Um, God bless you in, in the back. And uh, we thank God for those that might be watching. Um, please pray for us. Continue to pray um, for the church and pray that the Lord will continue to move the ministry forward for such a time as this. We're going to go to the word of the Lord um, found in the epistle of Romans, beginning... Um, in chapter 8, the epistle of Romans, chapter 8, beginning at verse number 32. Amen. Verse number, um, let's go actually to verse 28. Verse 28. And it reads, and we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God to those who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to become conformed to the image of his son so that he would be the firstborn among many brethren. And these whom he predestined, he also called. And these whom he called, he also justified. And these whom he justified, he also glorified. What then shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him over for us all, how will he not also with him freely give us all things? Who will bring a charge against God's elect? God is the one who justifies who is the one who condemns? Christ Jesus is he who died. Yes, rather that was raised who is at the right hand of God, who also intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? Just as it is written, for your sake, we are being put to death all day long. Yeah. We are counted as sheep.
for the slaughter. But in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor debt, nor any other creature shall separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise for the reading of God's word. If you never, um, if you don't remember anything that I say today, I want you to know that God is turning things around for your good. Come on and say, God is turning things around for my good. Come on and give God praise. Amen. The things that happen in this world uh, can seem very bleak, especially most recently in our lifetime. We face a plethora of things that is going on as it relates to world hunger, disease. Uh, many people are suffering with HIV, AIDS. Even right now, many people are in the hospital for various illnesses. abuse, rape, sex, trafficking, murder, poverty, racism, all of these that I mentioned are at an all-time high. However, I believe that even in the midst of all of that, God is turning things around. God is working behind the scenes. We may not see God, but we know that God is working behind the scenes. Even as we look throughout our community, we understand that we are surrounded by drug use, alcoholism. We have a liquor store almost on every corner. I want you all to understand and take notice that many people bash the church because they see a church on every block. Just because you have a church on every block does not mean that sin does not exist. Amen. Just as many churches, there actually needs to be more churches, in my opinion, because the bottom line is the church has been called to reach the world. And so we are surrounded by alcoholism. We are surrounded by blight in our neighborhoods. Many uh, people cannot afford their taxes here in Kansas City. And so many um, people and families lose their houses um, through tax, amen, and through their taxes. And so they can't afford to keep up their house. And therefore, because of poverty, many of our neighborhoods look very bad. But we thank God because we serve a God that even in the midst of all of this, I believe that God is turning some things around. Man, there is a drug addiction right within our families. There is drug addictions, and um, we don't know it. People in our families are addicted, and they seem like they are not coming off of the high. But I'm here to let you know that if you keep on praying, God will turn the situation around. Man, I don't know about you, but I was uh, in a mess in my lifetime, but God turned me around, and there are some um, situations that I'm still in a mess about, but I believe that it's looking good. I believe that God is turning around some things in my life. Amen. People, when they look at me, they don't um, remember how I used to be, but um, I know how I was, and so because I knew how I was and know how I was, rather, God turned my life around. And just like many of you are in this place, there are some things that you all have went through, and the only reason why you are still standing is because of the grace of God. Amen. In spite of your failures, in spite of your hang-ups, in spite of your mess, you are still here only because of the love of God. 
Amen. All of us have experienced God's love. Even some of you young people that are sitting in the audience, many of you have experienced God's love. Amen. Many of you have experienced his love, and because you have experienced God's love, you are still standing. God is saying when you continue to experience God's love, he will bless you, and he will keep you. We understand that our nation is corrupt with political leaders that are crooked, and it seems as if those particular crooked leaders have not experienced the love of God. Otherwise, if they experienced his love, maybe they would have a change of heart. Maybe they would have a change of action. Maybe things in the community would look better. But I understand this, that when grace abounds, we know that when sin rather abounds, the Bible declares that grace abounds even more. And so no matter how many people are crooked, God's love still will never leave you nor forsake you. No matter how many people did you in, no matter how many folk did you wrong, the love of God is still going to allow you to move forward. So we understand that there are many organizations that are rich and wealthy and they are not doing their part relating to helping people in need. Every time you drive down 31st Street, every time you drive um, and get off the highway on 435 and 23rd Street, you see people out there begging. They are asking for money. They are asking for things, and it's nothing wrong with giving people stuff, but there comes a time of empowerment. And God is saying that just like we have been empowered, we should try to empower other people. Understand this, that the church, we know um, the church is never going to be the same. The church is never going to be like it was, but as long as the love of God continues to abide in the church, people's lives will still be changed. The church, unfortunately, is what um, we call, it, in, it. it's in a spirit of competition, if you will. Uh, people are so quick to get offended when sin or wrong doing and is exposed. But um, I learned this, that when I was disciplined coming up, my parents, they would discipline me. They would correct me uh, because they loved me. Uh, I believe that uh, the reason why I'm in this pulpit is because of all the whippings that I experienced. I'm in this pulpit because my parents did not um, compromise. They did not negotiate, but they knew that um, I had a call on my life. They knew that I needed God. They knew that I needed something more than drugs. They knew that I needed something more than alcohol. They knew that I needed something more than sex. They knew that I needed something more than money. I needed the love of Jesus. Just like some of you are sitting here and you're wondering, you're saying, Lord, why am I here? You are here because of the love of God. God has given you his love and he wants you to return it back to him by serving him. You see, we as believers, we don't serve God from a distance, but we serve God. The Bible says that uh, when God is nigh, then we ought to run to him. In other words, that uh, as long as you can breathe, as long as your blood is going through your veins, and as long as you're able to lift your hand, as long as you're able to speak, as long as you're able to serve the Lord with you, your voice. God is saying that continue to worship him. So we understand that the church has been in competition with itself for too long. It's not about who got the biggest church. It's not about who got the smallest church. It's not about how many churches is on the corner of 31st Street. It's not about this church over here, but it's about the love of God. And so when you experience the love of God, uh, things will begin to turn around. 
And they're turning around for your good, not only for your good, but when things start turning around for your good, they start turning around for your children's good. They start turning around for your grandchildren that are not even born yet. They start turning around because what happens is the generational curse is um, broken. The generational curse um, has ceased, amen, because God's love is spread through your life. And so what Jesus did on the cross over 2,000 years ago, it was his love. The love, amen, of God lifted me. When I was down and out, it was his love, amen. And he reaches to the highest mountain. He reaches to the lowest valley. His love stretches. And all you got to do is accept the love of God. Amen. Sometimes you don't feel loved by your husband. Sometimes you don't feel loved by your wife. Uh, Sometimes your children don't even love you like they're supposed to. Your significant other sometimes don't love you. But the, at the end of the day, I know somebody that will love you in spite of your mess. I don't care how bad you smell. I don't care what type of disease your body is racking with. Uh, No matter your condition, no matter your present state, uh, God's love is greater than anything. So we understand people, they get quickly offended when their wrongdoing is exposed, including us. We we get quickly offended and we want to jump back and then we try to start playing the victim. But I thank God because I'm not a victim, but I'm a victim. Instead of people accepting their corruption, they run away like a teenage child and continue to mess up with the same problem. Amen. When we are corrected, we need to accept our correction. Because how can we be justified if we don't accept the correction of God? How can things turn around for us if we don't accept God's correction? So we see in this particular text, we understand that the Apostle Paul is the writer of the book of Romans. He's writing not only to Jewish people, but to Gentiles as well. We understand Rome was um, a place, it was very um, popular, it evolved, it had about 4 million residents that lived in Rome, and Paul actually was a citizen of Rome. He actually penned this letter um, in his third missionary journey. He was in Corinth at the time when he wrote this particular letter. He was in Corinth for three months, and the Lord spoke to him, and we understand that Paul did not um, set this church up in Rome. It was actually some Christians who got converted on the day of Pentecost, and scholars believe they went and set the church up. The church was mixed with Jewish people and Gentiles. Um, But Paul had to um, write to them to encourage them so that they could understand uh, what righteousness was all about. Uh, He began to deal with righteousness and how important righteousness is. Uh, A lot of times we as people of God will get sanctimonious, if you will, uh, meaning that you become self-righteous. You become judgmental. And so Paul is addressing righteousness. He's stating uh, to this particular church that everybody who serves God uh, is considered righteous. Uh, Amen. Many times just because you have not um, gotten past the finish line quicker than the next person does not necessarily mean that you are righteous. Uh, There are some of you that are running the race and you have been running the race uh, and it seems like you are not running fast enough. Uh, 
according to man. Uh, but you got to stop worrying about what man is saying. Uh, and you got to be concerned with what God is saying. Uh, uh, many times we get caught up in church work. Uh, we get caught up in programs. Uh, we get caught up in committee meetings. Uh, but I'm here to let you know uh, that committee meetings at the end of the day uh, does not mean a whole lot. Uh, church work does not mean a whole lot uh, at the end of the day. Uh, I understand it's important to do these things uh, to bring fellowship uh, and to b bring camaraderie among the believers. Uh, but at the end of the day, if you don't love God, uh, the Bible says that your righteousness uh, is as filthy rags. Uh, it don't matter what committee you're on. Uh, it don't matter how you can feed the poor. Uh, it does not matter how much food you pass out. Uh, it does not matter how many people that you visit in the jailhouse. Uh, um, what matters is if you have accepted God. Uh, for the Bible says that he that calleth on the name of the Lord uh, shall be saved. Uh, there are some folk that been in church all of their life uh, and they have not arrived like many of you have. Uh, but God is saying uh, that when you keep on running. Uh, God said eventually uh, um, you will make it to the finish line. Uh, for the Bible says that the race is not given to the swift, uh, neither the battle to the strong, uh, but to them that endure to the end uh, shall be saved. Uh, and so it does not matter uh, how slow you go. Uh, I'm not saying that you won't grow uh, because some people use their slowness as a time of excuse. But I'm here to let you know that all excuses was laid to the cross. Um, you cannot make any excuses when it comes to God. God is saying that when you start making excuses for living a mediocre lifestyle, for living like a midget, when you start making excuses because you don't want to grow or because you don't want to go up a little higher, uh, then God cannot justify you. Uh, well, but as long as you're doing all that you know how to do, uh, I'm going to give you an example. There were some people uh, that we went to school with, uh, and they had what you call a special class. Uh, I'm not offending anybody. Uh, just because they were in a different class uh, did, not meet, that did not mean that they would not meet the standards to graduate. Um, the problem line was that they just did not learn as fast as the others. However, that did not matter. What mattered was they were still learning. What mattered was they were still on their way to graduation. There were some of you in this place. You are on your way to graduation. You may not be moving as fast as mother more. Now, you may not be moving fast as elder more, uh, but God is saying keep on moving uh, because the race is not given to the swift. Uh, neither the battle to the strong. Uh, you're trying to figure it out, uh, but I'm here to let you know uh, that God's got it already worked out. Uh, just as long as you're doing uh, all that you know how to do. Uh, um, I'm here to inform you uh, that Jesus got his hands on you. Uh, Jesus got his hand in your hand. Uh, no man can pluck you out of his hand uh, just as long as you keep your hand in his hand uh, and just as long as you keep your eyes on the prize. Uh, I'm, I'm pressing. I believe I'm pressing. Uh, I'm pressing for the mark of the high calling of God. Uh, which is in Christ Jesus. Uh, just like I'm pressing, some of you have to press. Uh, but Paul addressed this suffering situation. Uh, many of the Roman people, uh, those that were sanctified, those that had accepted Christ, uh, they began to suffer. Uh, and many of them began to question uh, um, their suffering process. Uh, uh, but you got to suffer. Uh, as a believer, that's a part of your DNA. 
okay. Uh, suffering. Uh, if you think that you're going to get out of suffering, uh, then you got a rude awakening coming. Uh, you got to suffer. Uh, even in your marriage, uh, you got to suffer. Uh, in your relationships, uh, you got to suffer. Uh, even in the church, uh, some of y'all are blaming the church for your hurt. Uh, but the bottom line is uh, that you got to suffer. Uh, everybody got to go through church hurt. It's a part of your process. When you don't go through it, then you won't be out as pure gold. When you don't go through the church hurt, then you are missing out on a greater anointing. I'm here to let you know. I'm here to inform you that I've been hurt in the church, but that didn't stop me. I kept on ticking. That did not block me. I, I kept on getting elevated. Why? Because I embraced suffering. There comes a time that you have to embrace suffering. For the Bible says that he that suffereth in the flesh have ceased from sin. Um, do I got any sufferers in here? I don't care. I'm willing to suffer with him. For the Bible says uh, that when you suffer for Christ, uh, then you shall receive a crown of glory. Uh, I know it's hard sometimes. Uh, I know sometimes you don't like people talking about you uh, behind your back. Uh, you don't like folk backstabbing you, uh, but bring the knives on uh, because when you stabbing me in my back, uh, God is raising me up. Uh, when you stabbing me in my back, uh, God is lifting me up. Uh, he said that he would make your enemies uh, your footstool. Uh, and I thank God uh, that many times uh, that when I was attacked by Satan, uh, when I was attacked by the devil, uh, God had another thing for the devil. So we say to these things, if God be for us, who can be against us? God is saying that many times people will try to come against you. They will attack you. They will do things to stop you, to discourage you, to block you. Condemns. The Bible declares that there is therefore no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. Who is the one who condemns? Understand Christ Jesus is he who died. So you don't have to walk in condemnation because you have accepted Christ. Not only did Christ die, but the Bible says he was raised up. And now he sits on the right hand of God who intercedes for us. So Jesus intercedes for us every day of the week, every hour, every minute. Why? Because we can't do nothing for ourselves. Hallelujah. We cannot save ourselves. We cannot make ourselves righteous. Only Jesus can do it. Brother Vince, you are too imperfect to make yourself righteous. Ain't no sense for you even trying to talk your way out of something. Let God do the talking for you. Then he says in verse 35, who will separate us from the love of Christ? Then it goes down the line will tribulation or distress. It goes down the line. In other words, it's saying that God's love is going to extend from one generation to the next. No matter what we do, God is still going to love us. Now, he may not hate the sin that we participate in something out for you. You got to sometimes be the victim. In order for God to work something out on you, uh, people have to backstab you. In order for God to work something out for you, uh, things have to not go your way all the time. Uh, things sometimes have to go south in order for God to turn things around. 
Even on your job, when things don't work out for you, God is saying that they don't work out because he's in the background um, doing something so that you can experience his glory. So that's why you are being killed all the day long. For we are sheep. Amen. We always are going to the slaughter. We are always on the chopping block. Uh, Even in our families, we are on the chopping block. In the church, and the community, we are always on the chopping block. Why? Because God wants to work something out for us. But then he says in verse 37, but in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels None of these things shall separate me from the love of God. Some of you are wondering, you're saying, Lord, what have I done? You're saying, Lord, why have I gotten myself in this rut? You're saying, Lord, uh, how can you get me out of this? That the sufferings of this present time uh, are not worthy uh, to be compared uh, with the glory uh, which shall be revealed in us. Uh, There is some glory uh, that God wants to reveal uh, through you. uh, Glory uh, that your next door neighbor uh, might not understand. Uh, Glory uh, that your employer uh, might not understand. But if you keep on pushing, God will keep raising you up. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians, the second chapter, verse number 9, it says, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. I believe uh, that God uh, is going to get the glory uh, out of my life. Uh, The Bible says, uh, let not your heart be troubled. Uh, If you believe in God, uh, also believe in me. Uh, For in my Father's house, uh, there are many mansions. Uh, If it were not so, uh, I would have told you, he said, I go to prepare a place for you and me. For when I go, I'm going to receive you into myself. And then Philippians, the third chapter, verse number seven, he said, what was gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ, yea, doubtless. Then I'm skipping on down. He said, he said, I follow after Christ that I may apprehend of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places. But keep on keeping on. God is not through. He's not through with you yet. Keep on running. Run the race that is set before you because at the end of the day, God is turning it around. He's turning it around just like he turned it around for Job. He said, shall I receive good at the hands of God and not evil? Oh, my, turn it around. He's working it out for your good. He's working it out for your benefit. God, I said God, God is up to something. Turn it around, then worship him. Come on, come on. Because God's got me. Some of you that have been going through by yourself, you don't have to do it no more. But you got to accept him. Come on and praise him. 
It's all right, young people. Go on and get your praise up. Come on. Come on. Go ahead and praise him and shout the victory. Come on and praise him, yeah. Y'all praise him. The song says, oh, when I think of his goodness, when I think of his goodness, and what he's done for me. When I think of his goodness and how he set me free, I can dance all night. Come on, come on, put those hands together. Glory to God. Yeah. When I think of his goodness, and what he's done for me when I think of his goodness and how he set me free. I can dance all night. Come on and put those hands together. When I think of his goodness and what he's done for me when I think of his goodness and how he set me free. I can dance all night. Oh, everybody. All night. And what he's done for me when I think of his goodness and how he set me free. I can dance, 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 dance all night. Hey Amen. Some of you all still haven't shouted. Come on and praise him. If you got to get out in the aisle. Go ahead and social distance yourself and go ahead and praise him. Come on, go on and get your victory. Come on. Praise him. Get your praise on. There's nothing wrong with praising him.
Praise Him. Praise Him. Come on and praise Him. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. We thank God for his presence today. After hearing this word, there may be someone that want prayer. You might need the Lord to save you. We're going to ask that you would come. The Bible says that if you confess the Lord Jesus, you shall be saved. Is there anyone that would like salvation today? Praise God at this time. Come to this altar if you want salvation. If you just want prayer, we're going to ask that you would come. If you just want prayer, come. Whatever your need is, come. Come. Is there any others? Come, come to this altar. For after hearing this word, you might need the Lord to do something major for you. Come. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise whatever you need. Come. Amen. Praise God. Come. Come down, sis. Praise God. Amen. 
Amen. God bless you. Amen. Is there another? Is there another? Praise the Lord. Go that way. Not in front of the camera. Amen. God bless you. Is there another one? Is there another? Amen. Praise the Lord. Father God, Lord, we thank you for these that are on the altar. Lord, you know the situation, you know the circumstance. We pray, God, that you would meet them right where they are and help them to know, God, that you're turning things around. Lord, it's according to their faith and according to your plan. I pray, God, that you would heal them, touch them, deliver them, and bring them through. Hear my humble cry, Lord. You know what their prayer request is. Lord, we know that you can work it out, whatever they're going through. I pray, Lord, that you would fix it. In Jesus' name, amen. For those that are watching online, you might want prayer. If that's you, you can leave your prayer request in the comment box but we want to say a prayer for you for those that want salvation say lord i'm a sinner forgive me for all my sins wash me cleanse me and purify me in jesus name thank you for saving me and thank you for delivering me lord i praise you and i will ever give you praise and glory in jesus name amen Amen. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer. Come on and worship the Lord. Have your way, O oh God. Come on, come on, bless his name. Come on, bless his name. Come on, bless his name. We thank you for this word. We thank you for these, your people. Lord, we give ourselves away as you turn it around. 
have your way in our life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer. At this time, we are going to get ready to receive our offering. For the Lord has blessed our church and continues to do so. And we pray that you all uh, would understand the significance that it takes money to operate. For the Bible says that money answereth all things. And so we want you all to understand that with your resources, this church will grow, it will evolve, it will move forward. We can do what we need to do comfortably to get this church where we need it to be. We have a great edifice, a great church, a great building, but we have great people that make up this body. And with your seeds, we pray that you will continue to sow into the work, into the life of the ministry. For those that are online that would like to give, amen. Brother Wilson, just scoot over a little bit. For those that are online that would like to give, if you all would go um, to our web page, you can do that. Please go there to www.providence.com how.com and please give um, to our church. Um, you can give your tithe and your offering and then we also have a cash app where you can go to dollar sign p-h-o-w-k-c and sow your seed right there. Please do your very best today. Yes. Amen. We thank you for supporting our ministry and supporting the work at this time. We are going to ask that you all would stand to your feet, those that are here in the sanctuary, and we're going to pray over this offering. Father God, we thank you for these, your people, yes. that are here today to sow seeds into the life of this church. We pray, God, that their seed will return to them 100-fold. We pray that you would do it, and even these um, that are watching online or those rather that are watching online we pray God that you would bless them to give yes. and to sow into the work of the church Hallelujah. give them the spirit to give in excellence yes. Lord we pray that you would give it to them again over and over again we thank you in Jesus name we pray amen at this time um, please uh, follow the direction of our usher uh, we want you all to face the wall, face the wall, amen, just face the wall.